Ukraine's security service, the SBU, acts like a terrorist organization. That's the conclusion of Russia's federal security service, the FSB, after an almost three-month-long secret operation. They discovered that Ilya Bandarchuk, an SBU officer in Ukraine's southern region of Kherson, was organizing terror acts targeting politicians and law enforcement officers in territories under Russian-backed forces control. He organized a group of people who, for cash or even under duress, carried out the SBU's dirty work. Back in July, Ukrainian media reported that Sergei Tomka, a deputy police chief in the town of Nova Kahovka, who Kiev viewed as a traitor who agreed to cooperate with the new authorities, was killed in his car. What they didn't know was that Russia's security services had known about the assassination plot all along from Bandarchuk's phone conversations. They then staged the death to protect the target and make the SBU trust their hitman, who was cooperating with the FSB. When I first spoke with this SBU officer, he introduced himself as Ilya. In later meetings, my conversations with Ilya took place in the presence of the Russian Federation law enforcement personnel. Tomka wasn't killed. Moscow moved the policeman and his family to a safe place long before his staged death. People from law enforcement agencies came to me. They reported that the special services of the Ukrainian Nazi authorities had ordered an attempt on my life. They provided me with evidence of this, providing video and audio recordings where it was clearly audible what amount they offered, namely 70,000 hryvnas, for my murder. And the biggest nuance that struck me was that I returned home with my wife and child most of the time, and the record stated that it didn't matter what happened to them. The most important goal was to eliminate me by any means. In this audio recording, it was heard that grenades could be used as well as rifles. In this regard, I decided that it was necessary to cooperate with people from law enforcement agencies who approached me. Here I can even provide a video from YouTube, one of the most popular news programs in Ukraine, Vikna, where it is indicated that I was shot. The police officer heard Bandarchuk's voice messages. The FSB shared them with him as proof of the Ukrainian security services plan. Here is Bandarchuk speaking to the hired hitman. There's a cop. Do you understand who I'm talking about? He's now filling in for the deputy head of the department. The cop, do you understand which one? Tomka, yes. He used to be a district police officer. To ensure the right person would be targeted, Bendarchuk sent a picture of the victim and two of his bodyguards to the would-be killer. Have you seen the photos? That f***er, Tomka, the young one. He saw the pictures, and so did Russia's FSB, to whom he handed all the information about the plot. Regarding Tomka, I was ordered to find information on him, his current address, his former location, and photos of what he looks like. He promised me 70,000 Ukrainian hryvnias for Tomka's head. I was ordered to follow him everywhere and eliminate him. When Bandarchuk learned of the target's death, not knowing it was staged, the fake assassin received his bounty on a bank card. Man, can you send us your credit card number if you have one? You see, it's a government program. Anyway, you'll have to wait for a couple of days. They'll allocate the money, then someone takes it and brings it to me, and I send it to you. If you can, send me a screenshot from your bank app to prove that you got the money. My case is not the first one, and they will make more murder attempts, as considering the latest facts, this is their direct approach because they are not capable of anything else. They work out some sabotage methods, assassinations, ways to intimidate our families, making phone calls, and I'm not the only one. My other colleagues also suffered from this. The Ukrainians called their families, wives and parents, and intimidated them, threatened that they would kill them, blow them up. The next task followed immediately. Vitaly Gura, an official from Kachovka, had also worked with Russian authorities since the beginning of the conflict and thus signed his own death sentence. You see, let's put it this way, but he definitely goes to his place sometimes. He goes to his parents' house. I'll try to dig something up on him so that you could finish off one of these guys and then go on to Crimea. But once again, the would-be assassin was working with the Russian FSB and another staged killing was orchestrated under their guidance. 
He sent me the second task to eliminate Gura, the member of the administration. His assassination was also set up under the control of the law enforcement agencies. Ilya promised me 150,000 hryvnias for Gura. The SBU's target was killed in his own house, and the FSB made sure the video looked realistic. It went viral. In the beginning of August, the law enforcement officers approached me and said that my assassination was being prepared, that my family is under threat. They played the audio recordings for me as proof that they wanted to kill me and my family. My surname was mentioned several times, and they said specifically where and when they wanted to kill me. In his conversations with the hitman, Bandarchuk explained the reasons behind the SBU's assassination plots he was responsible for. I kill them and I don't give a f I don't consider them to be human beings. I have no mercy for them. They're filthy vermin. The command says file the cases. I say you file the cases for the traitors by yourselves. We should slaughter them, not file the cases. Bandarchuk became complacent and confessed he was behind the killing of another pro-Russian police officer who was also a blogger, sharing some grim details. I'll tell you how I did that. Have you heard that Kuleshov, head of police, got whacked in Kherson? He was set to be appointed as the head of the Kherson region police. He was whacked in the head. The whole shop was blown up. The glass shattered. That's it. That killing was real. Bandarchuk's future plans were ambitious and bloody. More killings and more explosions. You wipe that cop out and after that I want to try to load this shit. There will be four packs with remote control. A man enters to grab a coffee and then the juice pack at the entrance just blows up. I've talked to some guys from Azov. There are new toys coming. Do you know what a thermobaric weapon is? It's the same thing as a vacuum weapon. And we'll also get anti-personnel explosives with remote detonation. You won't have to move an inch. We'll set around 600 rounds of explosives and a ballistic device with a kilo or two. He also boasted that Alexander was just one of many of Bandarchuk's little army. You see, I have a lot of kids like you. I bring up a whole fresh unit of my own private killers. You're the most promising one. I always say, whatever you do or say, my boy is the best guy. He even saved your contact as my number one son. So who was the hired gun? The story is like the plot of an action movie. He was simply an ordinary civilian. One day, a random local resident and former prisoner Viktor Baranenko and his wife got a call from Viktor's former jail cellmate asking him to find someone to do some dirty work for the SBU. Soon after, Ukraine's security service itself contacted Viktor. This Ukrainian security forces guy starts calling me. He said it was necessary to blow up the Salamander Cafe. This is a cafe where local administration and military members gather. Well, we refuse to set an explosion because both me and Viktor are old. That's why the Ukrainian security forces guy asked to find someone else. I came out on the street and met a young guy who I didn't know at all and told him that there is a chance to throw a grenade and asked him what would he want for doing that. He said that he needed $150. I took out two grenades from a backpack, as the Ukrainian security forces member told me to, and I handed them to this young man. He walked away. One grenade he used for training and the other he threw into the Salamander Cafe. Quite literally, a guy picked up at a bus stop, and nobody, hired to kill people using hand grenades. That restaurant explosion happened. No one died, as Alexander, instructed by Russia's FSB, threw the grenade when the place was empty, rather than lunchtime rush hour. Due to the lack of proper qualifications of personnel employees, the heads of the Ukrainian security forces decided to use a simplified path, namely to recruit individuals from marginal groups and involve nationalist-minded youth for cooperation. Though for the SBU, Alexander, also known as Malish, the Russian word for baby, at just 22 years old, was quite a valuable asset. The command told me to guard you like the apple of my eye. Well, I'll try. I'll find you information. I'll send it to you so that you can make hit at least one of your targets and then leave for Crimea. Can you go to Crimea? I have a friend there also, you see. We can work there. We have everything we need there. We have all the stuff in Crimea, American weapons, glocks, grenades, everything. New place, new targets, new killings, new victims. Ukrainian security forces officer Ilya set a task to find a deputy chief of the head of Kherson region. He sent me photos showing what he looked like, where he lived, 
all the information I could need. With the help of these family photos, I understood that he was in Crimea. I needed to find him and then eliminate him. I asked how I would do that, and I got a reply saying that a man who lives in Crimea would give me the means to kill my target. Ilya promised me one million hryvnas for the deputy chief of the Kherson region head. After that, Ilya changed the task, and now it read, seven ministers of the Republic of Crimea. There are ministers, and I understand. I know about them. How much do you need? I'll get it to you. At least, they'll all come to work at one place. How much do you want, man, for a head? If 300 isn't enough, I'll give you 400. If they agreed on 300, I'll give that to you. If 400, I'll grant you four. Just name the sum. They're all in Simferopol. A hard mission to complete without any backup. That's how Alexander was introduced to the SBU's contact in Crimea. I asked about the man who was to meet me in Crimea. He said he was a good guy. He had cooperated with the Ukrainian security forces for a long time. And when I arrived in Crimea, he was to accommodate me and help me accomplish my set tasks. I have a young guy there, a Tata. You understand? He's a good guy. We worked with him. He's a normal guy. He's around 22 to 23 years old. He didn't serve. He's our man. He hunted FSB officers down and so on. His name is Mahmoud. The FSB followed Alexander to Crimea. With seven ministers on a new kill list, the risks were just too great. And Russia's special services arrested the SBU agent, exposing their operation to Ukrainian secret services. The man then shared the story of his recruitment and the bloody orders he received from Kiev. He helped me, and after that we started to communicate with him closely. He started to dish out the tasks. The first task was to be in Crimean territory. People who took part in military actions in Donetsk and Lugansk People's Republics. I had to secure safe exit from the Russian Federation for them and then the Ukrainian security forces officers would detain them. The next task was to take photos of military objects in the Crimean and Voronezh regions. The following task was to eliminate the deputy of Kherson region's head in Crimean territory. A cache was hidden by the Ukrainian security forces officers. There was a Kalashnikov rifle as well as grenades. The bounty was one million hryvnas. This story is just one of several cases Russia's FSB is currently monitoring as SBU operatives in Russian-controlled territories carry out Kiev's terrorist orders.